Hey everybody, welcome back to Organic Chemistry. My name is Todd Rothman, and in this video, we're going to learn about the stereochemistry of the substitution radical pathway. Okay? So we've got all the basics down. We understand the mechanism, the energetics, the diagram, the energy diagram. We understand the selectivity reactivity principle, how Hammond's postulate plays a role for us to understand that principle, and we also understand the different types of uh, stability or instability of radicals that you would form both on the hydrocarbon and on the halogens. Okay, So this now is the last part of substitution. And there'll be one more video after this, after the problem solving, and that'll be on radical addition and then other reactions that you need to be aware of that kind of some are substitution, some are addition. All right. So this video is very important because it kind of brings back some of the stereochemistry concepts that you learned about during your first and second exam. Well, more of the second exam. Okay, So we have to really dig back into the stereochem and we're going to do it in a way that's not really, you don't have to figure out R and S, we're going to do it in just like a more general perspective. Okay, But whatever I show you here is super important that you get down. So that's the first thing we're going to do right now. Let's review the stereochem terms that are most important for us right now. Okay, the first thing I want to point out is the configuration. Now remember, we have three different types of stereoisomers, enantiomers, diastereomers, and meso compounds. Now we have to be familiar with when you get one or the other. Now with enantiomers, you're going to have an R for one molecule, and if the next one is an S of the same, remember they're stereoisomers, they have the same connections, they have the same formula, but one's R, the other's S, then they're enantiomers. Okay? Or if one is RR, meaning there's two stereocenters, and they're both RR configuration, then the next one should be SS for enantiomer. And then of course if you have an RS on one molecule, and then the next one that you're looking at has an SR, they're enantiomers. So that's the relationship for enantiomer that you must, must remember. Okay? Now diastereomer, besides cis-trans, we're not going to look into that right now, because we know cis and trans are diastereomers. But from a chirality point of view, if one molecule is RR, and the next one is not the opposite SS, if it's RS or SR, then they must be diastereomers. So an RR and an RS or an SS and an RS, and it don't matter RS, left or right side of the, of the molecule, then they're diastereomers. So remember, enantiomers are mirror images. And so like your hand, left and right hand are mirror images of each other, right? So same thing with the molecule, R and S are mirror. Okay, diastereomer are not mirror images. So again, just please make sure that this is clear. And, and what I'm talking about is I don't, like, like down here I guess I give you an example. So if this is R and this is S, and the next one was S and S in those positions, then they're diastereomers, right? The opposite of that, S and R, then they would be possibly enantiomers. But that leads us to the last point. A meso is where you have to have at least two chiral carbons, okay? So you must have two chiral carbons. If you have two chiral carbons and it's R and S within it, well, it could be meso. How do I know if it's meso? Well, remember that all meso compounds will have the exact same groups that make them stereo. So, for example, chiral. So, this carbon has a methyl, an H, and a BR. And this carbon has a methyl, an H, and a BR. So, the fact that this carbon and that carbon, they have the same exact three groups besides the thing that connects them together, I know it will be meso. But the only time it's meso is if it has this, this is called meso potential. Remember I taught you that? We said meso potential is the first order of thinking, where they have to have the same three groups, both carbons, uh, both chiral carbons. Okay? They must have the same three groups. So if you have two chiral carbons and they have the same exact three groups, then you know if it's R and S within it, it's definitely meso. And that's what is very important right now. So R and S is the meso form of that molecule. So that means that its mirror image, the opposite of that, the SR version, is not different. They're identical to each other. So a meso compound and its mirror are not different from each other. Okay, they're the same. 
But let's say this was the R version, and this was the R version of this molecule. So we put wedge or da whatever we needed. Well, if they're both RR, it's not meso for sure. It's a it's an enantiomer. It has a relationship of an enantiomer with someone else, right? It also has a diastereomer relationship. Actually, let me refresh your memory of all this because it is so important that you get this stuff down. Um, so let's say I have wedge BR and a wedge BR and a back BR and a back BR, right? And then I have a wedge BR and a back BR, and then the opposite. Right, I have a back BR and a wedge BR. Now I'm not going to worry too much about figuring out chirality. It's not really necessary at this very moment. So I'm not going to go into that. But what I will say is, um, well, let's just go quickly. I'll just tell you the answer. If you, we, we will do a review on chirality and RNS and stuff, but just not right now. It's really not necessary to do that right this moment. So I'm trying to keep it focused on what we need for the radical. But we will come back around and review everything. So. This carbon here is R, and this one is S. Okay, now if this is one and this is two and that's three, it's clockwise for R. Lowest groups in the back, so that is true. It's R. But I'm, again, I'm just going to give you the answer. I don't want to focus in on this part. So now, being that this is the opposite, if this is wedge, now it's back on the left, so that must be S, right? This must be S. And since this is wedge, and now it's back on the right, it must be R, the opposite. So if this is molecule 1, and this is molecule 2, and this is 3, and this is 4, 1 and 2 are complete mirror images. They're opposites of each other, right? Okay. Now, over here, this is R, and this is S, and this is S, and this is R. So when I look at them, uh, what did I do wrong? Oh, I see. Sorry. Maybe a little bit too quick for myself. Um, this is actually R, and then this is S and S. Okay. So, again, don't worry about figuring out stereo chem. Just take it for face value for now, and we'll come to we'll go back and review. So, what do I know? Well, when I scan through this, I know to myself, okay, those chiral carbons have the exact same groups: a methyl H and Br. That's what makes it chiral. So, I know it has meso potential, for a fact, right? So, now the next thing I'm going to ask myself is does it have an R and S within it? And the answer is, yeah, it does. So what does that mean? That means that 1 and 2 are identical. They're not different. So because it's meso, right? So 1 and 2 are the same thing twice. So you don't draw it twice on paper. You draw it once. You could draw either 1 or 2, and you're good. That's it. That's the only answer. 1 and 2 are identical. That's the first thing. Now, 3 and 4 are the opposite, right? It's wedge back and then back wedge. They're opposite and it's not meso because I know it's got an R, R, and an S, S. It doesn't have an R and S within it. Only time you have meso is when it has meso potential and there's an S and R within it, okay? So down here, these are not meso. So these are enantiomers, enantiomers. Now, what is the relationship between either 3 and 1 or four and one. Well, because remember, one and two are the same, so we, could, we don't have to reference both of them. Well, this would be a diastereomer because they're not mirror images. Same thing here, diastereomer. So the fact that three is RR and one is RS, yep, RS, they're diastereomers of each other. They're not mirror images, right? So you see how they're diastereomer? So the meso is a diastereomer with those other two enantiomers. This is what you, if you're comfortable with everything I just described, perfect. That's what you need to know for now, okay? And make sure you get what I'm describing down. That's all you need to know for this chapter, okay? Now, as far as properties, that, of course, you need to know as well. Now, the properties for an enantiomer pair are the same. So if they have a boiling point, it's the same. If it's melting point, same. Everything's the same. The only difference is how they bend light and how they react with chiral molecules. But we're not going to worry about that one for this chapter. So the, the thing that we need to take back right now and uh, remind ourselves in our memory is that the enantiomers have the same physical properties, boiling point, melting point, their separations are the same dialect.